Hi and welcome to my latest YouTube video. In this video, I'm going to be performing a paired sample t-test. A paired sample t-test is a parametric test. It is different from an independent sample t-test and ANOVA. In an independent sample t-test, you have one dependent variable and you have one independent variable with two groups. For example, depression score across uh, two genders, male and female. On the other hand, in the case of ANOVA, you have one dependent variable and one independent variable with three or more groups. For example, depression score across people belonging to different religions, wherein there are three or more than three religions in the case. On the other hand, here in the paired sample t-test, we are going to be looking at the differences between two dependent variables across the entire sample. So we are going to be looking at, for example, the differences in the mean a score of uh, the respondents depression as well as anxiety across the entire sample and we're going to find out whether there is any statistically significant difference between those two uh, dependent variables. So let's go and perform the test but before performing the test we will need to check for the normality of the data. So let's go and do that first. Okay so before we check for the normality of the data we need to satisfy another assumption which is uh, to ensure that both these two variables are in continuous form. So the first uh, variable that we're selecting is of course anxiety. So let's double click this anxiety too and see. Yes, this is in continuous form. The other variable that we're going to select is stress. So stress too, that's in continuous form as well. You can see it's in running numbers. So we have satisfied the first assumption to ensure that both these variables are in continuous form. Now we need to check for normality. Now, the way we're going to check for normality is that we're not going to check the normality of these two variables in particular. We're going to check the normality or the normal distribution of data uh, with regard to the differences between these two variables. Okay, So, uh, we need to get the difference uh, between these two variables. For that, we go to transform, compute. We select the two variables. One is anxiety and minus that from stress and then we call this difference just for reference sake and then we click on OK. So it says execute that means we've got the difference. Let's go and look at the data. We go to the variable view and it should be there at the very bottom. Yes, you can see the variable here. Let's double click and check. Yeah, so we've got the difference here. Now this has to be normally distributed for us to be able to perform the paired samples t-test. So in the next part of the video, I'll just show you how we need to check for the normality of the data uh, with regard to this particular difference. So the way we check for normality in SPSS is different from the way we check it in PSPP. In SPSS, we have an inbuilt option which gives us the results of the Shapiro-Wilkes test which uh, indicates whether the data is normally distributed or not. Unfortunately, in PSPP, we do not have that option. Nevertheless, we still can check for normality of data using another method. Uh, for this, we go to Analyze. We go to uh, Descriptive Statistics. We select Explore. We select a variable that we want to check for. Uh, that is difference in this case. We put it in the dependent list. We go to Statistics. Select Descriptives. Click Continue. And then click OK. So here we have these skewness and curtises values. Uh, we have some other values as well, but we are mainly concerned with the skewness and curtises values for normality. And we also have the standard error. So what we need to do is we need to divide the, uh, the statistic, which is the skewness value with its standard error and the curtises value with its standard error. And we need to ensure that the value does not exceed 1.96. If it is within 1.96, then we can say that the data is normally distributed. To a certain extent. So let's go and do that. Uh, we'll just open up our calculator. So we have um, minus 0 0.04 and we divide that by the standard error which is 0 0.34 and we get minus 0 0.117 which is less than 1.96. So it is in the acceptable range. So that's with regard to skewness. Let's look at Curtis's. Um, this is minus 0 
um, we divide that by 0 0.66 and we get 1.05 which is close but uh, it doesn't exceed uh, 1.96 therefore uh, we can say that the data is normally distributed okay so now that we've tested uh, for the normality um, we can go ahead and perform the paired sample t-test but before that uh, we can also look at it from a graphical point of view so let's go to graphs go to histogram uh, select the variable that we want to choose which is uh, difference in this case put it in the variable column uh, select this option called display normal curve and then click on ok so here you have the histogram itself so this is a visual representation as i said of the uh, data in terms of its uh, distribution and you can see that it is somewhat normally distributed it's not a perfectly normally distributed of course but to some extent it is and that's what the numbers also indicate so this is just a visual representation uh, in case you want to uh, get a visual representation of the data so now that we're done with this let's go and perform the test itself so in order to perform the test itself we need to go to analyze we need to select uh, compare means under that we select paired sample t-test so let me just reset this um, we need to select the two variables one is anxiety and the other one is stress so once they they are selected uh, we just click ok so here we have the results um, you can see the mean score first of all you can see that uh, the mean score for stress is much higher it's 19.56 whereas for anxiety it's a 16.56 Three six, okay, and uh, we also look at the correlation over here. You can see uh, it's uh, very strongly positively correlated, and uh, we also look at uh, the uh, mean here, the mean difference. So this is in minus. So you can see the value is minus three point two zero, which essentially means that uh, stress is uh, of a greater value than anxiety. That's why it's in minus, you know, so anxiety minus stress. So stress is definitely greater. And uh, we also look at the uh, significance, which is statistically significant at a very high level. Okay, it's uh, 0, 0.000. So in the next part of the video, we're going to be interpreting this data and we're going to try and make sense of what these results actually mean. Okay, so I've placed all the data in a particular table, the important values that is. So table one shows the results of the paired sample t-test with regard to anxiety and stress. The mean difference was found to be minus 3.20, which you can see here. And the mean score of stress, 19.56, which you can see here, was found to be greater than the mean score of anxiety. Furthermore, the mean difference, that is minus 3.20, between the paired observations, that is anxiety and stress, was found to be statistically significantly different at a very high level from zero. So in other words, see, you can definitely see that there is a difference between these two uh, scores, right, 19.56 and 16.36, and the difference is here. But is this difference a result of an accident, a result of a sampling error, or is it statistically significant is what this whole test proves. And yes, this is statistically significant at a very high level, which means that we can say with certainty that the respondents in the present study are more stressed than they are anxious. So these results are definitely reliable in some sense, uh, statistically at least. So that's about it for this video. Uh, one other thing to note is that you can use this particular test in different contexts. Uh, for example, you can use the same test to measure whether a therapy had an effect on a group of people. Uh, there, what you need to do is you need to measure the anxiety or depression or stress score of the respondents uh, well before and then after. Okay, And then see whether there is any difference and whether the difference is statistically significant or not. Uh, another uh, area where you can use this, for example, is with regard to crime rate, perhaps. Uh, let's say you have 50 cities and you are uh, measuring the crime rate before a law is passed and after a law is passed to see whether the law had some kind of impact, whether the difference was statistically significant or not. So these are the different uh, situations uh, where you can use these kind of tests. I'm sure there are many others as well. But uh, that's about it for this video. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like the video uh, and uh, subscribe to my channel. And if you have any other doubts, uh, please feel free to leave it in the comment section. So thanks for watching and bye for now.